Hey guys, welcome back to Your Lake Fork Guide. Thanks so much for stopping by today for another episode of the Guides Network. And what you're looking at right now is me, and my good buddy Zach Watt, sitting down to discuss one of the most effective techniques that you can possibly fish during the summer to fall transition, which is where we currently are right now. Now, as you saw on the footage as we came into the video today, old Zach catches a lot of big fish on this technique. So I thought it would be better for him to teach you this technique rather than me. So let's listen in to what old Z-Dub has to say about fishing the wacky worm. First thing I wanna go over is a couple of misconceptions with the wacky worm. One of the biggest misconceptions you'll see with, with, with a little bit, I don't wanna say non-experienced fishermen, but fish, fishermen that don't fish the wacky worm enough is that you have to have light line, light tackle, spinning rods, spinning reels, so on and so forth. That That is just absolutely not true. Uh, I have fished a wacky worm for 15, uh, 20 years, and I have never thrown a wacky worm on anything other than uh, uh, other other than a bait cast setup. I like a, I like a six, six, six to six, 10 foot uh, medium action, fast hip rod. Uh, the, my reel of choice is a Curado uh, 200. So even though I'm using, uh, you know, a bait cast, uh, bait cast setup, wacky worming is still a finesse technique. Okay, so I'm a big believer that that I will only throw this on fluorocarbon line. Uh, usually go with either 12 to 15 pound test uh, fluorocarbon. Uh, it just it, it, it keeps it more of a finesse technique uh, because of the the way it falls with using that fluorocarbon and the fact that the fish have that much harder of a time seeing the line. Now uh, there's my three main wacky worm baits are going to be the Zoom Trick Worm in a variation of colors, watermelon red, watermelon candy. Uh, watermelon magic those are those are my probably my three favorites I'll also wacky worm a stick bait uh, there's a variety of stick baits out there I like the smash tech smash stick I actually caught the second biggest fish I ever caught in my life on the smash stick rigged wacky um, old B-Law your Lake Fort guide happened to be in the cove I was fishing and uh, we actually got a clip of it right here so take a look Zach what you catch oh. Oh, I love. 23 and a half. A 10 pounder that's in the slot. That's a slot fish 10 pounder. Billy, what does that mean? Uh, 24 inches. It has to be over 24 inches to keep in a tournament or something. Yeah. And he, he, it's 16 to 24 you can't keep. So 23 and a half? That would break your heart in a tournament, bro. Now, last but not least, my third favorite option for wacky rigging is the LFT ring fry. Very versatile bait. Uh, you know, what I want to talk about now is how do we rig this? Well, let me tell you about the hook I'm using. I use the Gamakatsu Finesse Wide Gap Weedless Hook right there uh, in one aught. Now, you're going to go to the store and you're going to look at this hook and you're going to say, you expect me to catch, you know, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12 pound bass on this hook? Yes. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, this is, there's a plenty of other hooks on the market. I've read different reviews on this hook and that hook and people saying, oh, I like this one. By far, I, I will fish this hook over any hook on the market if I'm uh, fishing, uh, fishing a wacky worm. Now, the way we like to rig this bait is uh, just simply on the zoom trick worm, you'll see that little, that little fat hump there in the middle of it. I like to go about three rings back and just hook it right through the center there to where it's, you know, hanging off in the upright position. Now, it doesn't stop there. One thing that I, uh, that I didn't mention is that I never fish a wacky worm weightless, okay? Uh, even if there's dead calm wind and I'm fishing two foot of water, I've always got a weight in the head of this hook. Now, what I use for that are these Lunker City nail weights. They are very, very easy to manipulate. And what I mean by that is uh, if I am fishing less than 10 foot of water, I will use, I will, here's that Lunker City nail weight. I'll use half of this weight right here. 
And the way this Lunker City nail weight is designed, you see the ridges there. Well, those ridges provide uh, uh, two benefits. One, it won't allow the nail weight to slide out of the head of the worm on your cast or hook sets. Also, you can simply just bend it back and forth and it'll break in half just like that, just that simple. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll, uh, is we'll grab this half a nail weight here, just slide it right down in there into the head of the worm, right there, and there we go. Now, the benefit to this is when you are working this worm uh, through some grass or around a bush, this worm is still gonna fall very slow, but it's gonna fall head first when it hits the bottom, it's not gonna immediately just lay down. It's gonna stay up there a minute and give that fish a chance to suck it up. All right, where do we wanna fish a wacky worm? Well, I, I personally will fish a wacky worm anywhere, anytime, any water depth. Now, I mentioned earlier that we only use the half the nail weight when we're fishing the shallower water. If I'm fishing water greater than 10 feet, I'll go ahead and use that, that whole uh, Lunker City nail weight. It just helps it get down in that deeper water. Now, as far as spots, I like to concentrate on grass, whether it be uh, hydrilla, uh, 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 coontail, duckweed. Uh, duckweed's a little bit tougher to fish. Uh, you just gotta, you, you, you find the holes in the duckweed and flip, flip over into them holes. Uh, it's, almost like, it's almost like punching, uh, except you're not punching through, you're just landing it in a hole in the middle of the duckweed. Other than those concentrated grass flats, uh, I, I mean, honestly, I, like I said, I'll fish a wacky worm anywhere. I'll flip stumps with it. Uh, I'll cast it in the middle of a middle of a bush. I will fish a main lake point with a wacky worm. Okay, 17, 20, 25 foot of water. I'll use that 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 entire Lunker City nail weight. Uh, you just have to be a little bit more patient to let it get down to the bottom. Once it's down to the bottom, you just work it like you normally would. Okay, um, but uh, uh, you know, there's really never a wrong time to throw a wacky worm. I've caught them in the spring, I've caught them in the post spawn, I've caught them in the summer, I've caught them in the winter. I mean, really, it literally is the best bite getting bait you can have in your boat. Now, uh, that brings me to the, the second misconception I wanna talk about is that wacky worm is a small fish bait. Are you gonna catch small fish on it? Of course, okay? But I'll catch small fish uh, on a big crankbait as well. The biggest bass, the two biggest bass I've ever caught in my life have been on a wacky worm. That's an 11.4 and, and a 10 pounder, okay? So uh, don't get caught up in the trap of, oh yeah, you're throwing wacky worms, you're gonna catch you know, a bunch of, bunch of pound and a half, two pound fish. Yeah, you are gonna catch a bunch of pound and a half or two pound fish, then you're gonna hook into that four, that seven, that nine. Uh, they'll eat it just like any other fish will eat it, okay? So, so don't believe those misconceptions it will catch any size fish in the lake. All right, so now let's, uh, let's sling it out there a few times and let me talk about uh, you know, how, how I feel comfortable retrieving this bait. Hey, there's a bunch of different ways you can get a wacky worm out there. Uh, you, know, you can sling it out there, you can pitch it out there, or uh, depending on your experience level, if you're trying to, to, to hit the base of a stump or a hole in some duckweed, you can certainly flip it out there. Uh, there is plenty of weight on a wacky worm <laughs> it catches a lot of fish too, doesn't it, ZW? Like I said, man, it is the, oh, you got me hung up around that stick. It is the best bite getter out there. You need my fat log? Yep. Look, you got her line right around this gill. <laughs> Look how you ate it. So. Hey, you think they don't like that wacky worm, baby? <laughs> they will get it all the way in there. Oh my goodness, that's funny. That couldn't happen any better, could it? <laughs> that's funny. Thank you. Now look, let me show you what my worm looks after that after that fish catch, okay? It's a little bit wallered out in there where, where, I, where I had the hook through. Great thing about a wacky worm, you can pull that hook back through there, okay? And then uh, you know, you don't have to get a brand new worm. Just simply move your hook up a little bit, hook it back. So you just move that down the worm, right? Let's see where's the damage part. Damage part damage just right, right back right here. there. And then we just moved it up the worm. I right just there. moved it up a quarter of an inch. Now there's a bunch of different ways to fish the wacky worm. 
uh, again, I'm fishing grass right here. I've got a lot of, uh, lot of coontail uh, growing up just under the water surface here. Uh, I got some duckweed going down the sides. Um, so, you know, I can either throw it out in that grass flat or I can look for holes in the duckweed. If I was gonna flip a hole in the duckweed, I would try to actually land this bait about six inches past the hole and slowly, slowly drag it back and let it fall in that hole in the duckweed. And then once the bait, once your, once the bait gets down to the bottom, okay, cast it out there, give it a good three or four count, depending on the depth of water you're fishing. What I like to do is just reel the slack up, okay, to where it's not quite taut, but almost, and I just give it a good two or three pops right there. What that bait's doing is it's coming up like this and then slowly falling back down to the bottom head first, okay? Same thing, boom, 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 okay? Now, one thing you really need to pay attention to when you are wacky worm fishing is that, you know, you're not always gonna feel the bites. A lot of times, right before you give it that good two or three pops, when you reel in that slack, you'll feel some tension on that line, okay? Just give it a little bit of tension and you can feel that fish pulling back or you can see your line running running right or left, okay? Once that happens, you lean into that sucker as hard as you can. Talk about the hooks a little bit. How do you set the hook on these fish? I mean, I know uh, you drill them pretty good, but that probably has a lot to do with the fact that you're fishing that medium action rod. That allows you with that small hook to go ahead and set it like a Texas rig maybe? That's right, that's right. So, uh, you know, when I know that there's a fish on, I see my line running or I feel that fish, uh, feel that fish pulling back, I like to do a hook set straight up. Okay, because uh, you know we, we showed you the hook earlier. It is a very small Gamakatsu uh, finesse weedless hook, but when you set that hook straight up, it pulls it straight up into the top of their mouth. And you're you're jerking pretty hard. You're not holding oh, back. I'm I'm, I'm I'm trying to rip his face yeah, off. You like the steel, and that's the reason you're allowed to do that is because of the rod, right? Because of the media, medium action rod. That that's right. Now there's there there's two reasons I prefer a medium action rod. One, it's got plenty of flex in it, which will allow me, okay, to really reach back and use the, not necessarily use the power of the throw, okay? So I don't, I, I'm not really using the power of the cast. I'm using the flex in the rod to whip that bait out there. You know, I mean, heck, with a, with a wacky worm, that's what, 60, 70 foot out there. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's plenty. Uh, a lot of times... I, I really, I, I just did that for an example. A lot of times I won't cast that far. Because I've got the medium action rod, I like for it to be a little bit closer. So when I do need to set the hook, you know, I have, I have plenty, of, pl plenty of backbone here with this medium action rod to set that hook. Notice I've casted, I've casted it out there. My bait has settled on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna reel up my slack, but I feel a little tension. I'm gonna pull just a little bit more tension. Okay, I don't feel anything pulling back. I don't see my line running right or left. So I know I'm on grass, so I just give it a good good pop and it pops free of that grass and then it comes on down head first, okay? So, uh, you know, like I said, just because you feel tension on your line, that does not mean a fish is on there. We're fishing grass. We expect this bait to come up against that grass stalk like this, okay? And then once you pop it, it and comes off of that grass stalk, grass stalk like that. There it is again, another another piece of grass, okay? As you can see, I've got enough tension on it to where my rod is, is bent just a little bit, so I know there's not a fish pulling back. I don't see my line running sideways, so I just, I give it another pop, it pops right on free. That's that's the benefit to having that Gamakatsu weedless finesse wide gap. There you on. go. Hey, that's a full breakdown. That's in depth right there. That buddy. is in depth as I can make it. That is a full breakdown on the wacky worm. And I'm going to tell you what, he may not be a guide, but he is absolutely an expert when it comes to that wacky worm. I've witnessed it firsthand time and time again. Zach's one of my best friends in the world, and uh, we spend a lot of time on both together, haven't we? Yeah, absolutely. Got, listen, don't get discouraged. Uh, you know, it, 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 it takes time, it takes patience. You're not going to go out there and just be a master wacky worm fisherman your first couple of times out. Heck, I, I used to I used to run B law all up and down this boat because I'd be hammering fish on wacky worm and he'd still be trying to figure it out. Hey, you will get it. Just keep don't give up. Yep. It's a great bait. It's a great bait for beginners. It's a great bait for kids, for women. Anybody new to the sport just because it Absolutely. just gets, it gets once, once they get that feel of it, it gets so many bites. And, and you know, tough conditions, 
I don't know if it was tough conditions or if we were fishing wrong or what it was. Either way, we were having a tough day. We are having a tough day on this trip, and, and, and lo and behold, what catches the biggest fish? The wacky, wacky worm. Man, I've seen it happen so many times, and I've seen this guy catch some giants. I mean trophy fish on it. So learn this technique. Uh, days when you're struggling, when it's tough, put it in your hands and try and figure it out. Uh, all you new fishermen out there, put it in your hands religiously. I promise you you'll catch more fish with it. And uh, I guess that's about it, ain't it? Yep. Thanks for uh, thanks for letting me come on and talk about wacky worm yeah, fishing man, a little appreciate bit. Appreciate you doing this. Yeah, buddy. buddy no Thank problem. You. Appreciate you guys watching. Hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you want to see some more, be sure and subscribe. It'll notify you every time we do a new one. And we will see you next time right here on your Lake Forecast. Good fish. Lake Fork, Texas, baby. The old smash stick does it again. Come on! Smash it, he's getting after him, boy. I don't think they mad at him this morning. I'll tell you what, he's got a winner with this guy. Come on, hey. That's how he is! That might be the biggest one yet. A little chunky monkey right there, boys and girls. A little fatty. Dude! Well, somebody has just taken the lead in the big fish <laughs> steal yo bait challenge. ZW is not shut out. Good point. Good job, brother. I'd like to dedicate this catch to all of our boys in blue out there.